Hey there! So today I'm going to start building a bar cabinet using all of this walnut plywood. I'm pretty excited about it. I can't wait to see it finished with all the walnut. But it's also going to have a glass door, something I've never done before. And I'm going to incorporate some marble. And I say marble because it's going to be an epoxy marble pour. Again, something I've never done before. But that's okay, we'll figure it out as we go. But before we get started, I wanna give a quick shout out to my friends at Craig for sponsoring this project. And now, let's get building. So the first step for this project is going to be the marble epoxy pour, because that needs about 48 hours to cure uh, before I can use that and incorporate it into my project. So we're gonna take care of that. So, to do that, I've actually cut up a piece of plywood that I had laying around. It's a scrap piece, I was using it for another project, so it's already stained. But because I want marble, I need it to be white. So we're gonna sand it a little bit, put a nice sealing primer, paint it, let all of that dry before we do the epoxy pour. A quick sanding actually took off more stain than I had imagined. I applied two coats of primer. I am using a shellac based primer because I don't want any of the remaining stain to seep through later. Once that was dried, I poured my white pigmented epoxy. I will have a very detailed video tutorial of exactly how I did this soon, so stay tuned for that. But I essentially came back and added streaks of black pigmented epoxy, bedded it in and played around with it until I was satisfied with the pattern. And once that had cured for a couple of days, I came back with another coat of clear epoxy. And here is the completely cured epoxy marble. I did make sure to sand off any of the drips on the side because that's where we will be joining it to the cabinet. Okay, now let's start cutting up that walnut plywood. As always, I have the full detailed step-by-step -step plans and dimensions and I will add a link to that in the description below. I used the Craig ACS to cut down the huge sheets of plywood into more manageable sizes. The great thing about the ACS is that you just need to align your guide track to the measurement markings and make the cut. Now there are a whole bunch of cuts that are the exact same dimension, which is the depth of the cabinet. The Craig Grip Cut is perfect for this because I can just hook in my circular saw and go ahead and make the cuts reproducibly and quickly without having to measure again and again. And now it's time for edge banding. I am using walnut edge banding for my walnut plywood. And if you wanna know all the details about how to apply edge banding and get the best results, be sure to check out my video about all things edge banding and covering up plywood edges. And now it's time for pocket holes. I am using the Craig 720 to make my pocket holes, but you can use the Craig 520 or the 320 as well. The great thing about the 720 is that it automatically adjusts the jig height to the material thickness, so I don't have to set that up. But if you're using the 520 or the 320, be sure to set up your jig height to the three quarter inch material thickness. The drill bit collar is set to three quarter inches as well. Okay, next up, I need to make pocket holes on the back of this piece of marble that I made. I'm just a little bit nervous about it because I don't want to dent this. Although it's been 48 hours since I poured the last coat of epoxy, so it should be cured now, but I just want to be double safe. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Craig 320 because I can directly clamp it on the back of this piece and I don't have to clamp it into the jig and worry about something pressing up against the epoxy right now. So I used a drop cloth to protect the epoxy from getting scratched and I used the Craig 320, set it up for three quarter inch thickness and clamped it in place and then just went ahead and made all the pocket holes. It's time to assemble the frame and to make sure that I don't scratch any of my plywood, I put a drop cloth down on my workbench. I attached each of the stationary shelves onto the side using wood glue and one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. A right angle clamp is super useful in making sure everything stays aligned. 
For the middle shelves, I measured exactly where I wanted them to be. And then I used a straight edge clamped down across the board to help support the shelf as I attached it. And then I just repeated that for all of the other shelves. Now, one of the things that I kept in mind was to make sure that the pocket holes were on faces that would be hidden so that the pocket holes were hidden when the project was completed and we don't have any pocket holes to fill in after the fact. And another thing to keep in mind is to make sure that all the edge banded edges are facing the same side. Once all the shelves are attached, it is time to turn it over onto the other side and attach. Once again, you want to make sure that all the shelves are aligned, measure and mark exactly where they're going to be so all the openings are nice and square. And that is the cabinet frame. I added shelf pin holes using the Craig shelf pin jig so that I can have adjustable shelves inside the closed cabinet. Next step is the drawer. I built a drawer with pocket hole screws and an inset base. I have a video in the works with beginner friendly drawer building methods. So stay tuned for that and hit subscribe so you don't miss that. Then I went ahead and attached the drawer slides to the frame. I am actually using a push to open drawer slide and I will add a link to the exact one I used below. But I decided to use this because I don't intend to use any knobs or pulls on the front of the drawer face. I used a combination of hot glue and wood glue to hold the drawer face in place. The wood glue does the work in the long run. but but the hot glue allows us to move the drawer face around to align for a few seconds before it cools down and holds the drawer front in place so we can open the drawer and add countersunk screws from the inside of the drawer. And now it's time to make the interlocking wine rack. Each of the openings in the wine rack is four and a quarter inches so I marked that followed by three quarter inches for the plywood thickness and then the four and a quarter inch again and the three quarter inch again. Once we have those lines marked, the length that they need to be cut is exactly half the depth of the wine rack. So in our case, the depth is 15 inches. So all of these slits are going to be seven and a half inches deep. And then we do the same thing on the vertical dividers as well. I use my jigsaw to make all of these cuts. You have to be really, really precise with the curve of your cut, as well as making sure that your cuts are nice and straight. I have made a lot of these cuts in the past and I am pretty comfortable making the straight cuts, but if you are not, I highly recommend using a straight edge guide for this. Also, it's very important to use the right blade. I am actually using a top and bottom cut blade, which makes it super easy to get a clean finish on both sides of my plywood. I talk more about this in my jigsaw video, so be sure to take a look at that. And so we have two horizontal pieces and four vertical pieces that will interlock to make the wine rack. I tested to see if it fits well in the opening, which it did. So I took it out and took it apart and applied edge banding to all of the edges that would be visible in the end. Now for the door. The door is built using one by three boards. I bought a large walnut board from the lumber yard, cut it down and ripped it down to make my one by three boards. I was also able to rip out a three quarter inch square dowel from that width, which I will be using later to build the wine glass holders. I sent them through a few passes through my planer and then got down to building the door frame. Now, I wanted to use dowel joinery for the door frame so I don't have any visible pocket holes. For this, I am using the Craig dowel jig. I estimated the depth I needed to drill with my 3 8 inch drill bit and used painter's tape to mark that. And then I went ahead and made all the dowel holes. I used wood glue and 3 8 inch dowels to assemble the entire frame, clamped it together and let it dry overnight. 
The next day I gave it a quick sanding to remove any glue residues and then I installed the hinges because I really wanted to install the door in place in the cabinet before working on getting the glass installed on the door. I'm using the concealed hinge jig which makes it super easy to create the holds for the Euro style jigs to sit into. These hinges are super easy to install. The other side goes into the cabinet and once it's attached, you can simply slide the door into place and screw the two sides together. Now it's time for the glass. This is the step in this entire project that I have been the most nervous about. But can we just take a moment to appreciate the beautiful cross reed glass that I found, which is going to be so perfect in this case. I had the local glass shop cut up the glass to be about half inch wider than the opening on all sides. So that is the size of the rabbiting bit that I'm using. I set the depth of the rabbit bit just a little over the thickness of the glass and I got ready to route out that rabbit. The router leaves rounded corners, so I used a chisel to knock those out and make them nice and square. So it turns out that the glass was still just a tiny bit bigger, probably about a sixteenth of an inch. Instead of trying to make my router bit work for that, I decided to simply go ahead and use a chisel and take off that little tiny thickness that needed to be taken off. and the glass fits perfectly. <laughs> what a relief. But of course, I'm going to keep the glass separate and safe until I apply the final finishes. Now let's quickly build the base. The base is built with two by two boards and it's a very simple structure just put together with wood glue and two and a half inch pocket hole screws. It can be a little bit harder to get into those tight spaces and the Craig right angle pocket hole driver works perfectly for this situation. Okay, now last part of this project is building the wine glass holders. These are super easy to build. They're made of three quarter inch square dowels and quarter inch thick by two and a half inch wide hobby boards. I measured and marked the center of those hobby boards and attached the square dowels using wood glue. Now that everything is built, it is time for the final finishes. Since I'm using walnut, I used boiled linseed oil to bring out that gorgeous grain. And I stained the base with black ebony stain. I installed a push to lock latch on the door because I was not planning on using any knobs or pulls on this entire cabinet. Finally, we brought the cabinet inside, turned it upside down and installed the base onto the bottom using two inch countersunk pocket hole screws. Let's install the wine glass holders. These are installed using one and a half inch countersunk pocket hole screws. I used our wine glasses to get an idea of the spacing that needed to be between these holders. Our wine glasses are pretty standard and I found that three and a half inches was the spacing that worked perfectly. So I went ahead and attached these. With the wine glass holders in place, we turned the cabinet back right side up and added the finishing touches. I added the quarter inch sheet of plywood to the back using a staple gun. Inserted the wine bottle holder into place. And finally installed the glass into the door frame using some glass clips. and installed the door in place. I can't believe it worked out so beautifully. That cross read pattern is exactly what I wanted for this cabinet. I also added some shelf pins and a shelf inside the cabinet. And then loaded it up.
And what is a bar cabinet without that little extra oomph? This has to be my favorite project of this year. I am so pumped with how this turned out. I did add LED light strips to the back of the cabinet. I didn't have something long enough to go all the way to the top. Still waiting on my order, but I will be adding that very soon. So follow along on my Instagram page to see exactly what it looks like once everything's lit up. The wine rack fit beautifully. The marble top worked out exactly how I had imagined and the glass door. The glass door is something that I was the most nervous about, but I am so excited with how perfectly it turned out. And it was not that hard at all. So there are probably going to be more glass doors in our future projects. As always, I have the full detailed plans and tutorial available for you. I will add a link to that in the description below. And that includes the complete material list as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.